Hello from London. I'm Chelsea and I've lived in the city for over a decade. I've explored, eaten and boogied my way through every corner. And I'm going to let you in on eight of the biggest packing mistakes tourists make when visiting London. Let's go. By the way, we have a London packing guide that tells you exactly what you need when visiting London. It includes a digital printout which categorises London by season, London weather by months, jacket and shoe purchasing recommendations, and a list of all the essentials you need when visiting this awesome city. It includes all of the essential information that is perfect for first time visitors to London. Link in the description. If you're coming to London, you are going to be doing a lot of walking, like a lot. And our public transport is great, but our parking is not. So we tend to do a lot of walking to stations and around the city. So you're going to need good walking shoes. Otherwise, your feet are going to hurt a lot. Remember, London is an old city, so there's a lot of cobbled streets and our sidewalks aren't that great. So the last thing you want to be doing is sightseeing in heels. We also recommend packing a pair of shoes that are waterproof. We don't tend to wear rain boots around the city, but the weather in London is very unpredictable. And yes, it does rain a lot. So as long as your shoes are waterproof, you'll be fine. This is just the case for sightseeing though. When we go out in the evenings, we like to dress up a little bit. So if you're eating out, it's totally valid to pack a pair of heels. As mentioned, London weather can vary a lot and we have seasons here. So I'd recommend going on your weather app and checking a few days before you visit to make sure you're packed and prepared. My biggest recommendation above all is to pack layers. The weather varies a lot, even within a day. You could be going outside to the tube, to a museum. You would need three completely different outfits. It can be really cold outside and boiling on the tube. I also see people assuming they'd be able to wear a sundress and nothing else if they came in like August. But even in the summer in London, I'd recommend packing layers. It's March and the weather's about 15 degrees today. And this is what I'm going for. Have a think about what you're doing whilst you're here. If you're into a more casual trip, you don't need anything that's a bit more fancy schmancy. But if your itinerary calls for dinners out, going somewhere a bit more bougie, you're going to want to dress up a bit. Also, FYI, you don't really need swimwear in London. Bonus tip, always pack a spare outfit in your carry-on in case your luggage gets lost. I promise it will save you a lot of stress. Generally, I'd recommend bringing the smallest size suitcase you can. London is super chaotic and our transport is small and busy. It's also not crazy accessible, so anything you can do to make yourself as nimble as possible will help you avoid the stress. Big suitcases are also more expensive on flights, so packing a smaller suitcase saves you money, especially if you're here for a shorter trip. However, you will want to bring a suitcase you can leave some space in for souvenirs. You'll definitely want to buy some things, and the last thing you need is some last minute stress when you realize you've not got enough room for all your goodies. London is a massive city, so make sure you've got a big enough bag to pack everything you need for the day. You might want to carry a reusable water bottle. You can fill this up at water filling stations or pubs and cafes. A reusable coffee cup. Lots of cafes will give you discount if you use your own cup. Sun cream and layers like extra hats, scarves, jumpers. Portable phone charger. It can be a nightmare to find somewhere to charge your phone in London. And you might want to use your apps on your phone like City Mapper or our itinerary maps, of course, link in description. And headphones. If you want to be a true Londoner and plug yourself in and ignore the world. Quick interruption. If you find this video useful, you will totally want to check out our free London 101 guide. It is super easy to use and gives you everything you need to know if you're a first time visitor to London. We break down how to get to your hotel from the airport, figuring out London transport, how to get and spend London currency, and even how to tip in the city. This guide is super user friendly for first time visitors to London and it will remove all of the stress. Oh, and it's completely free. Click the link in the bio to get the information on how to access. Okay, back to the video. Generally, a hotel is gonna provide these for you, but I'd recommend phoning ahead, just so you're not caught short. 
If you're staying in an apartment or with your friends, then you might have to pack these with you. But overall, hotels will provide hair dryers and towels for you. However, if you like using washcloths, you might want to bring those along. It's not a standard really for British hotels to provide these, but again, give your hotel a ring so you're not caught short. I know we all like to think we're super organized and we obviously don't forget anything, but I'd really, really recommend having printouts of things like your passport, your credit and debit cards, just in case. If things happen, stuffs get lost, there's pickpockets, it's better to be safe than sorry. If you do like to have physical copies of things, then definitely keep it separate from everything else or have a virtual backup, either on your phone or email. You'll also want the address of where you're staying handy, just for peace of mind. If you're traveling to London from abroad, you're gonna need a few plug adapters so you can use your tech. In the UK, British plugs look like this. So you'll need a plug adapter that looks like this. In the UK, our power operate at around 240 voltage, not 120 like in the US. So you're gonna wanna check if your appliances are dual voltage before you come over to the UK, otherwise it can be dangerous. Told ya. What does dual voltage mean? It means your appliance can operate at both 120 and 240 volts without a problem, like this one. Most laptops and phones nowadays are dual voltage, but it's best to check before you leave just in case. You can actually get a converter to convert single voltage to dual voltage, but we wouldn't super recommend these. Heads up, we use different plugs here in the UK to the rest of Europe. So if you're planning a longer trip, you might want to bring different plug adapters with you. Otherwise, you're gonna be stumped. You've been warned. British customs are super strict. So if you try to bring things through customs and security, they're gonna pick you up on it. This is things like flip knives, meat, dairy, even some plants won't make it through. And rough diamonds, if you happen to have those lying around. You'll also want to check your medication because it might be a controlled substance in the UK. You'll need to carry it on your person and get a letter from your prescribing clinician. Otherwise, it's taken off you. British security is also really strict. This means you'll want to check that your luggage meets travel requirements before trying to get through security. Don't bring any liquids over 100 milliliters. They'll take them off you. A quick note, the 100 milliliter limit doesn't apply to things like baby formula, things for medical purposes, or special dietary requirements. Although, be prepared to bring proof. And obviously, if you want to get through with baby formula, you need to have your baby with you. Sharp objects like nail files over the length of six centimeters will also be taken off you if you try to take them in your carry on. But don't panic, we're a major city. Anything you can't bring through, you'll be able to buy in London. And you're ready to go. Have you got any tips for people packing for their London trip? Leave them in the comments. Also, if you want more hints and tips, we have literally hundreds of videos. Click one of the boxes around me.